I'm just back from traveling and catching up on Elementor's updates, and I see they made a big fix to their new editor, something I believe would have been a fatal flaw if they didn't fix it. But they listened to us, they fixed it, as well as added some improvements to the UI. So let's check it all out. And here is a big fix. It is the way that we name our classes and the way that it is inputted into the source code. For example, I gave my flex container here a class called section full height, which then I give it 100 VH. If we go and look inside of the source code, let's inspect it. What happened was we were getting this generated string of numbers and letters, and this is going to be super bad because it would have been very difficult for us to write CSS targeting the classes that we create, but also the fatal part is this would have sabotaged any hopes for us using a CSS framework. And now with the latest update, when we give it a class like what I did right here, if we check it out inside of the HTML, Let's go to inspect. We can see now that generated string of letters and numbers starting with a G is gone. And we have the actual classes that we created. This is awesome. I'm so glad Elementor listened. But now we need to do the same with variables. And I know variables hasn't rolled out inside of the version 4 editor. But if we were to go to our site settings and then check out our global colors, well, our global colors our variables and we give them our own names as well we're able to name these variables it's doing the same thing as it was doing with the classes giving a generated string of letters and numbers and this has been going on since the beginning of globals but it's something that definitely needs to be fixed because I know myself and a lot of others are thinking ahead in the future on how this new editor is going to work and be super useful. And in one of those ways is using frameworks, ways to speed up our productivity and workflows. And we definitely need to control the naming of our variables and classes inside of the source code. Before we go further, I want to show what version we are running. This is using the Elementor Beta Developer Edition, and it has version 3.30 Dev 1 running. So you're going to to see these updates only on this version and up and please do not do this on a live website create a practice website like what i've done here the first improvement that i noticed was hovering over the indicator we can see style origin you click on it and it's going to give you more details about where the styling is coming from is it coming from a class like we see here in the green or the base which means right inside of the editor this also tells us what is being canceled out we can see that this was set to row but my class canceled it out with it being set to column that is pretty cool even if we were to switch to local and we get the grayed out dots we could still see the origin right here and we get more information. So that's a really good update. And then when we click on a class, well, it's going to show us now where the classes are at inside of the indicators. Now, one thing I hope that they bring to the next updates is when you do select on local that it gives us some sort of an indicator where the styling of the classes are at. So I hope that this continues to improve right here, but this is a really good step forward. The next thing is going to be over here inside of our background colors. Let's go to background gradient. Check this out. When I select a color and we give it a color, we now have this icon to clear so we could clear out our style. Even if I were to go here to my style, let's say I want to go to the size that I have set. We now have this icon and we could just clear it out all at once. Now, the styling isn't showing right here inside of the editor. There's still bugs. I'm not worried about bugs right now because this is the developer edition. We're just checking out the UI. The next improvement, and this is very interesting what they did inside of their approach, is having a shortcut for the value. So right here, it starts off at pixel as it usually does, but if I want to change it to RAM, I just press R and it automatically converts to RAM. Or let's try it again. I go press E for M, or let's say I want a vertical height. I just put in VH and go in there. I don't have to go in and click. And that is one of those really big improvements that has been lacking on the old editor is just the amount of clicking you have to do. All that clicking really it starts to add up and it starts to become really tedious. So that's a really interesting approach, and I can't wait to see how that translates into the workflow. 
Next up, let me go ahead and duplicate this editor here. So I'm gonna to go to my editor, I'm gonna be here inside of my class, and I'm gonna go over to my typography and edit the color. So I'm editing the color here, but let's say I wanna go here now and make some edits. I'm gonna go there, click on style, well, we got to start over, okay, but if I were to go back here, it remembers where I was at. The older version, it would always start off collapsed. So the editor, it is starting to remember where we were editing and not making us start the process all over again, which is cool. But now, I would like to see them take it a step further. For an example, let's say I'm over here and I am editing the layout. And I want to do something like change the alignment right here. And when I go over to the same exact element, well, it's still stuck on where it was editing before. What would be really great is that if it carried over the position in the editor where I was at in the last place. This is what's done on brick. So I know it is totally possible. And it's something that might seem small, but for everybody who has been using bricks, you know how big of a role this plays in the overall productivity and workflow. And after all, that's where I see this editor, the direction it's going in, is to improve our productivity and workflow. So let us know in the comments if you're trying out the new version for editor, what your thoughts are, and if you have any questions, suggestions, ideas, or thoughts. Maybe you're still in the early stages of building websites and wanna know more about how the whole class thing works and why. Let me know in the comments and I'll create some more content around it. Well, that's it for this video. If you did find use in it, don't forget that good YouTube stuff. You know what's up. Like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you inside the next one.